Hi, and welcome to the fourth episode of Building a Software as a Service Application with Rails. So in this episode, we are going to take a look at our application in the browser. We're going to add Bootstrap. So we are going to look at adding Bootstrap to our application, styling our layout and welcome page, creating a form helper that will allow us to more easily style our forms, and finally styling our new account form. In the past few episodes, we have not done any work in the browser. We have relied on our unit tests, or in our functional tests, to ensure that everything is working properly. Because of this, we're left with a user experience that is somewhat lacking. Let's see what we can do about that. For this project, I'm going to use Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a CSS and JavaScript library that provides a grid, uh, a lot of CSS styling and components, and some JavaScripts that allow us to get up and running with an, a basic nice looking design very quickly. I encourage you to take a look at their website to see what all it offers. Now there are many different ways to include Bootstrap in your Rails application. Uh, my favorite way happens to be this gem here called Bootstrap Rails and there are even multiple gems that will do this for you. Um, this particular gem um, converts uh, Twitter Bootstrap to SAS which is a CSS precompiler and um, allows you to very easily include it in your application. And you can read more about this uh, on GitHub in the documentation. Inside the gem file, I'm going to paste the line that was suggested on the GitHub documentation. However, I am going to change the operator to the pessimistic operator just to limit the updates to only minor patch versions. In the terminal, now I can run bundle install. And I will have to update my asset files to include the bootstrap resources. So in my application JS file, I'll add a line for bootstrap. And then I want to rename my application CSS file to application CSS dot SCSS so it uses SAS and instead of doing um, this manifest format I'm just going to use SAS to import the files that I would like to import and I'm also going to create a layout CSS file so I'll import that now as well now I'll go ahead and create the layout.css.css file under the stylesheets directory. And in here I'm just going to paste in some styling. This will give us a buffer on the top of the page and it will also style our flash messages. And the extend is a um, SAS provided function that will simply take the CSS style that you specify and drop its contents into the current declaration. Next up I'm going to add some styling to the application layout file. Um, if you're curious about what any of this does be sure to check out the bootstrap documentation. It's really great. It gives you examples for everything. And next I'm going to paste in some code that adds a header. And this is, like I said, just going to create a header. And it, will, it has a link to our root path for our application. Now when we refresh the page, um, and you'll need to restart your Rails server, uh, we will see that it's looking a little bit better, uh, but now let's focus on styling our welcome page. So inside the welcome index HTML file, I'm going to style it up by adding a bootstrap component called a jumbotron. 
uh, and we're going to add a title and a description of our service and we are going to style up our link to look like a button. So back in the browser we can refresh the page and we'll see that this is actually looking quite nice. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out is if you'll remember in one of the first episodes we added the guard live reload gem and if you're using Chrome you can download the live reload plugin and this will work with the guard live reload to reload your page after you save an HTML file. Just make sure you um, turn it on by making sure that the circle is filled in here. Now that our welcome page is looking nice, let's see what we can do about this form. Now to style forms, I typically use a gem like Simple Form, but at the time this was filmed, uh, Simple Form was not yet integrating nicely with Bootstrap 3. So I'm hoping that that is resolved soon. Um, so what I'm going to do is just create a simple uh, helper that will style up our forms with Bootstrap 3. So I'm going to create a file called uh, form helper under the helpers directory. And in here I'm just going to paste in some code. Now what this is going to do um, the primary method that we are going to be using here is the form group 4 method which takes uh, the form that we're working with, um, the particular field, so for example the subdomain field, and a block. And what it does is check if the form field has errors and then it is going to create a div uh, that Bootstrap 3, ex with the styles that Bootstrap 3 expects, it's going to create a label for our field. It's going to output whatever's in the block. So in this case, it's going to be an input. And then it is going to output any errors that are associated with that field. Inside of our, our new account view. Let's add some styling around the whole thing to sh make it appear more nicely. And what we're using here is Bootstrap's panel component. And finally, let's use our form group 4 helper that we just created to style our subdomain field. And within the block that we're passing to the form group 4 method, we are going to create an input group. Um, this is another component that Bootstrap provides us. And this will allow us to display some text on the right side of our input field. Finally, we'll go ahead and style our submit button. Back in the browser, we can see that this looks quite nice now. It displays a label and it displays um, dot time tracker dot dev to indicate the full URL that you will navigate to once you create your subdomain. And if we try creating the account with without inputting a subdomain, we can see that it turns red and displays the error message for us. So I think this is a good stopping point for now.